So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together. But the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down and looked in and saw the linen wrapping lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet, they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. But the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary Magdalene stood weeping outside the tomb. And as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. And she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? And she said, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom were you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. And Jesus said to her, Mary? She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. And Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. That familiar Easter story is the foundation of our proclamation. The tomb is empty, and yet people have trouble believing that. From the very beginning, his own disciples, they saw the empty tomb, and they didn't know what to make of it. It takes a little bit of time to process what is happening in this story. Very early on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene in her grief goes to be close to the tomb of Jesus. That's an experience that many of us have had at one time or another in our lives. When we have lost a loved one and we are in grief, we want to go to that place where we remember them. Sometimes it's to the cemetery. Sometimes it's to a park that we used to go to. Sometimes it's to an activity that we participated in together. But whatever it is, we want to be close to that one. She did not expect to find what she found. But Mary went to the tomb looking. Well, we don't know what she was looking for. It says looking for Jesus, but she was looking for comfort. She was looking for something that would make her part of, connected to this Jesus. And when she got there, just imagine her shock that the stone that she saw rolled into place by big strong men is gone. It's been removed. He was not a rich man. He didn't have gold. He wasn't buried with treasures. Why would anybody do a grave robbery on Jesus' tomb? It doesn't make any sense. She must be brokenhearted. And she goes to the disciples and says, It's empty. I, I, I don't know what's going on. And they go back with her. Now, they probably had a little bit more information. They probably had heard Jesus talk about what was going to happen with him going to the cross and then being in the tomb and then rising three days later, but they still didn't understand. They looked and they saw, and they record in great detail here in John's Gospel the things that they saw. 
and yet they still had trouble believing. It takes them a while to process what's going on, and they go back to their homes. But once they understand that the tomb is empty, that Jesus has risen from the dead, once he appears to them and says, here I am, see me, then they know all of the words that Jesus spoke were true, and all that Jesus did was a sign from God. Mary, still grief-stricken, is there at the tomb weeping, not knowing whether to go home or to stay there or to... She's just weeping. She has nowhere to remember Jesus because the tomb is empty. And then this man says her name. And when he says her name, she recognizes that it is Jesus, the same Jesus that she saw crucified, the same Jesus that she had been with as they went from Galilee to Jerusalem, the same Jesus that she heard speak and saw healed, the same Jesus that she knew to be her Jesus. He says her name and she recognizes him. Isn't that the way that we come to understand? Isn't that the way that we make a connection? When we recognize someone and they call us by name? That's when it makes sense to Mary. And to be honest, that's probably when it makes sense to most of us as we come to Christ. <clears throat> when we realize that we are known by God when we realize that Jesus knows our name. This is Easter Sunday and we celebrate the empty tomb. We celebrate the resurrected Christ and we give ourselves to him, not simply because of the miracle, but because of all that he is, all that he said and all that he taught and all that he did and the fact that he went to the cross and came back from the grave and he still seeks us and he still loves us, and he is not finished with us. That's the miracle of Easter, that God declares God's love completely and fully. And when Christ comes out of the grave, he looks at his disciples, he calls them by name, and he says, we have work to do. We have a word to proclaim. That's who we are as the church of Jesus Christ. That's who we're called to be, to, to bear witness this day and every day that Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Let us pray. Merciful God, help us to be the church that you have called us to be. Help us to be the disciples that you need us to be. In this time and in this place, our faith is tested, and yet you call us by name. Allow us to respond in faith. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
<laughs> now we go into the world to be the church of Christ. Wherever we are, we are his disciples. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Easter.